This way. Come on, brother. I'll tell you, man. It's really and truthfully, I don't even, it's like you said, and I was sitting there thinking, I told him today, it don't matter how hot the fire gets, whatever that devil throws, it doesn't matter if you just hang on. Because that devil, he ain't got nothing. When he took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and put them in that fire, everybody else fell down dead, but they had God with them. And they went walk right through it and got right in there. And when you put three in there, here come the man, the fourth man, the fourth man of God. I mean, I just can't get over that the last couple of weeks. I ain't got nothing to do with my message, but uh, that's all right. You know, I, I just, I want to take a moment to just thank the Lord for what he's done for me. You know, he's brought me from th the things, places that I should have never been. And don't ever want to go again, Jesse, like you just said. But Lord, when he gets a hold of you and he takes you where you want, all these people you see out here that are so depressed and so tired, I, I believe, I mean, I get it. It, it happens. And you'll have, you'll have men of God and women of God who get depressed. Because that's what Satan does. He attacks you. But when you see people out here in this world that ain't got God, and they ain't got a relationship with the Lord, and they want to tell you how, how bad their life is, it's like, hey, I got something for you. It's the same thing that did, he did for me. He'll pick you right up from wherever you're at. He'll drag you out of whatever hole you're into or wherever you want to go, amen. He'll say, get up, get up, and come with me. And he'll never leave you. He'll never leave you. You will have to leave him, but he won't leave you still. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Tonight, quickly, probably, we'll, we'll do what the Lord wants us to do. But uh, we're going to we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to be in Ecclesiastes. Start out in uh, chapter four, verse nine through twelve. If you want to turn with me, when you got it. Say Amen. Actually, before I forget, let's, uh, if you can stand, if you don't, if you can't, that's all right. Just, uh, we're going to ask the Lord to bless this word. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time and for the service, what you've given us so far, God, for the blessings of these, of these singers, Lord, and, and the voices, God, as each one called out to you, Lord, and just, just for your, for your spirit to come in this room, Father God, as we sit here, God, we, we just take in your presence, Lord, we ask that you would bless this word, which you've already blessed, God. And ask that you would just give me the uh, the patience and know how to deliver it the way you want it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't know who this message is for, but I can tell y'all it wasn't what I was going to preach. But it changed on me just today, and that's where God puts it, and we're going to do it. Amen. But uh, we're going to talk about friends and relationships, people you have. Ecclesiastes 4, chapter nine, or verse 9. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift, us, lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no help to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can, be, how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And the threefold cord has not quickly broken. You can be seen. Who are your friends? That's what I'm here to ask you. Who are you? Who do you hang out with? They change. We have. I think we have. I think the Lord puts us through seasons with friends and people, just like He does, like He does with our walk. You know, there's people who come in to your life that are there to, to, to make you stronger. And there's a time where you make them stronger, and I think the Lord moves you on sometimes. I'm not saying you got to go and not ever talk to that person again, but I think you become closer as you get older, you see it. When I was younger, I had some friends that I started out life with, and they disappeared, you know, a lot of them. One of the times, and I'll tell a brief story, but uh, one of my real good friends, when I was in the fifth grade, I went to, uh, I came from private school to, to public school in Lebanon, and the first friend I met was a little bit different than what I was used to, let's just say. And I'm not judging, he's he a good fella. But uh, I went to Ridgeville where we learned Bible verses. And we had to wear certain certain clothing, 
And I'd never seen a Metallica shirt in my life. I didn't know who Metallica was. But I, I wanted to because I thought it was cool. I was like, man, I gotta give me some of that long hair in the back. Which I guess that's kind of coming back, went back out, thank the Lord. But uh, I got around this fella and uh, I thought he was gonna be my best friend for the rest of my life. Well, little did I know that uh, my teacher was mom, mom and dad's friend. And uh, after a little bit of me starting to act like him, they decided that he wasn't gonna be my best friend anymore. <laughs> Ain't that funny how it happens? I was so mad. I thought, man, you're making me not cool. I was finally going to be cool after I got to this new school and everybody thought I was cool because they didn't know me. Not that I wasn't cool before, but you know, anyways. So I didn't see the problem. That's what happens with the Lord sometimes, I think. Sometimes we don't see the problem. But thank the Lord that he goes before us. Like you said, somebody was saying, he goes before us and straightens out that path so that we don't get off to the side and off to the left. Or when we do, there's somebody there to pick us up, like my mom and dad. As I got older, you know, he disappeared a little bit. And the last time I seen him, I was bringing him back from the jail to court. And unfortunately, you know, he... He made some bad decisions in his life. And about 34, I think he was, is when he did he 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 checked out. He let, he left us. And I don't I hate that because he never got an opportunity, really ever, I don't think, to have a have a normal life, a decent life. You know, and people, you know. God, we all have a choice at some point. Right. And, you know, and I, I'm not one of those people who goes around and saying that one person had a better option. It's the truth. I mean, some people have a better chance, but it's what you make of your your chance because God will give you a chance. Right. Just like he does when it comes to your salvation. Amen. You will have an opportunity to call him Lord. Amen. That's one thing that he has guaranteed us. Yeah. You know, everything else is all under, but you got that power to call him God. As I got older, I started making some different friends. And, you know, I went from my youth group friends to my high school friends that I played football with. We graduated, got a little bit older. And then those friends that I chose, I walked away from God. And, you know, they didn't really know about God and didn't care about God. And I went right along with them, you know. But I will say one thing, and this really don't even have any, I will say one thing. During my whole time of my life when I was sinning and doing things I shouldn't have been doing, the Lord never left me. Because I, you know, I, I showed him some things I wish I'd never showed him. Yeah. But you know what? When he made me, he was ready for it. Yeah. So when, when that devil, like we was talking about the other night, just when that devil wants to talk to you about what you did behind, my God's a God that looks forward. He don't worry about the behind. Yeah. There ain't no there ain't no left behind to him. It's forward. He don't have any, he don't have any, I told you I would do this. If he tells you he's going to do something, he does it. That's our God. You know, so if he says you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Don't bring it back up. Don't bring it back up if you're carrying something. But anyways, as I got a little bit older, I had to say, you know, there come a point where I got tired of what was going on. You know, I got tired of running from the Lord. You know, I, I, I ran so hard, and I, what I thought was some good times turned out to be nothing. You know, the, it's, sin is but a season, as we always say. It's nothing, there's happiness in sin, but, but for a season. And I, I have to ask, you know, myself, what kind of friends do I want now that I've saved and, I, and that the Lord has taken? I've made the Lord the, the number one priority in my life, and nothing changes it. You know, is what what kind of friends do I want now? Tell y'all, those friends that I had, the ones who wanted to go beer, drink beer and play softball every weekend and every night, and uh, I wanted people around me who was, you know, out chasing the bars and chasing women and all those things. When I got with the Lord, that all changed. Yeah. 
And now, you know, the people I want around me are the people who seek the Lord. I want people who are kingdom-minded people. I want people who are going to pick me up when I'm down. I want people who don't make the mountain. They move the mountain. They help me move the mountain. When I get down the valley, I want people who come down there and they will pick me up and they'll get behind me and they'll say, Go, Craig. Go. Pick up your feet and go. Whatever you do. Because when Psalms 23, when it says, Yeah, I walked through the valley of shadow of death, it says, I walked through the valley of shadow of death. It didn't say I stayed in the valley of shadow of death. We get to where we want to stay in the valley. We got to get out of the valley. And the re we, way you get out of that valley is you start praising the Lord. You start praising the Lord until He comes to you. You call upon Him. He's right there with you, but He'll let you sit there if you don't pay attention and, and, and call for Him. And I got friends now that they'll run right down in that valley with me. And even when I don't feel like saying nothing, they'll, they'll they, they pick you up. You know, when I when you get done doing something, you feel like, man, I just didn't do what I was supposed to. Lord sends them right there. Pick eight, knock it off. Don't do that. Don't go back that direction. You know, so many people go backwards. And, you know, they want to go back to those friends that was on the outside of the world. You know, the, the people who were doing the things, the people who wanted you to go do the things you want, that God doesn't want you to do. And that's one of the things that I tell people all the time is if you want to change your life, change your friends. That's right. If, you, if, you're, if you're doing bad things and you're doing, you're doing things that, you know, you, People, I get people in my cruiser all the time, take them to jail. And they, and, and they, they, I believe them. They want out of what they're doing. But the, the thing is, like we were talking about, JR, they go right back to that same group of people who don't care, like your friends that love Jesus, that want to promote, want you to be the best you can be. You know, I want the, those people. Those are people you want to get around. And if you don't love Jesus and you, you decide that's not what you want to do, get away from those people anyways. Because someday, you will love Jesus. Whether it's too late or whether it's not, that'll be up to you. And that's what, you know, what just, it, 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 it infuriates me sometimes. Because it's like, I love you, man. And I see what you're doing. I see what you're going through. But, man, you won't listen because you have to fill it yourself. You know what I mean? You have to fill it yourself. But, man, you won't take that family member. And you just want to shake them, man. You just want to be like, hey, man, I, I've been there. You know, it's like somebody just want to smack her head against the wall. Smack her head against the wall. It's like, why are you doing that? Because they don't know, they, they, don't, they don't want to do anything different. We live under attack all the time. Well, I think sometimes we even get used to it. And I think those are the times that you really got to have people that are like what we would call a battle buddy. And, you know, I've got some. Jesse, you got, you, we're one of them. Some, there's people that I call upon when I can't handle something. Or, or, it's not even that I can't handle it. I just don't know what to do. And, you know, God, God told us it's uh, actually in... Um, Proverbs it's uh, Proverbs 12 26 says the righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray that's what we were just talking about whenever you get with those people it doesn't sometimes a lot of times I'll have people who who are, are doing the best they can for the Lord but they're they're I try not to say it this way but it's really the only one. sometimes people are weaker than other people you know what I mean? And so that goes with the with your walk with the Lord. Sometimes you're not a season. Sometimes you haven't been doing as long. Sometimes your your demons are a lot stronger than my demons. You know what I mean? That you got more of a tag. So you want them to be you want to be equally yoked. And that's what the Bible I and every time I preach this or I, I've preached a portion on this, I leave it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and read it to you guys. I want you guys to hear the amplified version though. A lot of you probably are going to run me off and tell Sammy that I didn't use the King James. Or the... I'm all right with it. He'll be okay. Do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony can there be 
between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Amen. Amen. Listen, we got to love everybody. All right. I don't care what their what their beliefs are. Right. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they wear, what they smell like, Jesse, what they what they what they got on their forehead, whatever. Whatever they do, you got to love them. Because that's where the problem that, that's caused a lot of separation in our world is that the church stopped loving people. They love the people inside the church sometimes when they all got along. But the other part of it was that whenever they got outside the church, they only loved the people that was in that church. And God didn't put us here for that. God sent us here to love everybody. He said, love everybody. Keep my commandments. That's what he said to do, right? So we have got to get back to loving on people. And you don't know what people's going through. When you see somebody walking down the road and the Lord says, hey, pick them up. I know it's a bad day. And it's, but man, it, you got to be, you got to have some sense. I'm not saying that, but there comes a time when you've got to pick that person up. Because you might be the only person, they might be walking to the Jeremiah Bridge to jump off of it. You don't know. But God put you there for a reason. And man, people, you don't know what they're going through. Just one word. Hey, man, how you been? Hey, JR, how you been today? Man, I ain't seen you in forever. I missed you, buddy. You know, is God treating you good? And he might think, well, I don't even go to church, but whatever. You know, but hey, you know what, he, what he'll remember when he sees me? He asked me how I was doing. He asked me what God, well, how God was treating me. Yeah. So he loves that God so much. What, what am I missing? Right. Sometimes you got to plant those seeds, man. We got to plant those seeds. We always, we, we always talk about, we got to get out and do this. We got to get out and do that. We have got to get out and do it. Quit talking about it and be about it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Quit talking about it and be about it. Amen. Start talking to people. Start praying for people. Amen. If you've got lost loved ones, I told them the other night, you got lost loved ones, and maybe you only pray once a day. You know, I don't know. If you do, I, I feel sorry for you because you're missing out. You're missing a lot. <laughs> you're missing a whole lot. Amen. But the other point of it is, if you pray that one time a day, you better have their, their name coming out of your mouth. Amen. Because how can you expect God to do something if you won't ask him? So many people won't ask him for something. Quit putting God in the box. If it's, I don't care if they got cancer, if they got forearms grown off or forehead. If you want to remove, you tell God to remove. You ask him to remove it. You know what I'm saying? The other one is, who's speaking into your life? Because whoever you're around, they're, they're probably speaking into your life. And just like that Bible said, I'm not saying you can't have friends that are sinners. I mean, that's part of that's part of how we get to them as we're with our friend. Yeah. But are, when that friend, when that sin starts coming into your life, then that's when you got to be strong enough and have a have a good enough yeah. good enough relationship with the Holy Spirit. That when that discernment tells you, hey, it's time to get away. Mm -hmm. No matter what, how much you love them, no matter how much you know, it, it might be what kills them. You leave them, but you're not what kills them. That's what the devil is going to tell you. I've seen it so many times. That I've had to, you know, that I've had to pull myself away from people. And sometimes, I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you, it's not just the sinners. It's the church people. Amen. Every once in a while, you got to pull yourself away from them and some of the church people. Because, hey, none of us are perfect. And our flesh is just like the world. You know, you'll get off on it. You'll get off. You'll have your down times. And sometimes, Miss Whoever or Mr. So-and-so wants to tell you about how... Uh, how, how bad everything is here at the church and how bad this or that. Or at the, at the, I'm not talking about this church specifically. I'm just saying they want to tell you they want to tell you how the bad things are all the time. You keep listening to the bad, man. It's like that's it starts eating at you. you know, it, it, it's the way the Satan gets in. He want, he just he just pecks and pecks and pecks until he gets in there. The next thing you know, your church is everybody's fighting, you know, and it's all because of most of the time, so I'm stupid, to be honest with you. I'm, yeah. I'm, I can say stupid. I don't know. God, we're okay. <laughs> um, when you, when these people are speaking, are they Christians? Are, are, are they, one of the things I see now is you have to ask yourself, you have to ask the Lord, are they real Christians? Because there's a lot of people running around claiming Jesus. There's all different kinds of Jesus in this world that we live in. I don't know if y'all have seen it yet or not, but there's a whole lot of different types of Jesus. Because, you know, one of the things with, as I studied the Holy Spirit is that I learned is that you can make up any kind of Jesus you want because you can't, you can't see him physically. But a lot of people who have never felt him 
don't even know who he is because they never did what they were supposed to do to even get where they could feel it, you know? You better have a, fine, a good shepherd. You better find you a good pastor. I can tell you right now, and if you can disagree with me if you want, but we'll argue till the day is we, we got a good shepherd right here. Amen. We got a good man. You got, you got a good man who's preaching. We, this church has been blessed over the years. I may not have been a member or went here, but I've been here for about every one of them. And I'm going to tell you, from it's got a tradition of great men of God because God cares about this church. God cares about his people. He cares about the people who care about him. And he's not going to let somebody come in here and destroy this church because this is his house. It might be just brick and mortar, but God established this place. Amen. Amen. This is his house. We'll do what we'll do what God wants done. I've been blessed, man. I, I since I since I've come back to the Lord and started, you know, doing what the Lord has called me to do, I've had I've got two or three tradition seasoned saints that I can call upon and to teach me the things that I need to learn. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know, the other night, I, I think I said, I met Sammy at a, a church about the size of uh, those first four pews about a year and a half ago or so. Didn't know him from Adam. He didn't know me. But man, when the, when the spirit got moving, we, we met each other. We found each other. You know, God put me right to him. I would have never that night told you I would ever speak to that guy. I would know him again. You know, I don't go see him preach somewhere, but I can, I knew that my granny loved that man. And when I got in that service, it was something different, man. <laughs> it was something different. It it wasn't just it was a, it was a, it was a spirit. Yeah. It was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That Holy Ghost, he can take over. I don't care how big your church is. I say it all the time. Right. Part of the thing, that guy says that every time. I don't care. If you want to preach to three million people or or, or, or ten people. Who, to, who are going to have influence. Give me the 10, because if I can give me 10 people who will influence those 3 million, i got a lot better chances of telling them about it. You give me 10 solid people who love the Lord like they're supposed to do, get with the Holy Spirit, they get on their hands or knees, they pray, they do, they, they read their Bible, they, they, they just absorb the Word and everything the Lord pours on them. That oil just fills them up, man. They just walk around like that. Those 10 people will make a bigger impact than 3 million people who don't care. Come on. Amen. Amen. Right, bro. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm going to close. I'm not going to preach for long. I want to take the opportunity because actually, I want to take the moment to, to tell you. All the friends I've had in my life, I've been blessed. A lot of I know a lot of people. Played a lot of softball. We did a couple of different schools. And my dad, I don't think he, I, I don't know I've ever met anybody in my life that can go to a completely different state and run into somebody who knows in a grocery store. I, I'm telling you, and it, it, it's not like it just happened once in my life. It's happened my entire life. My wife will tell you, she don't speak a lot because she's kind of quiet. But she'll be like, I, how do you know so many people? Because, man, the people I don't know, I, I treat them like I do, you know, a lot of times. And that's what we got to do. We got to love on people. I went through a long time of loving myself. And then when I had, had my little girl, my first little girl, God started showing me that there's more to, more to the world than Craig. You know, I love my mom. I love my granny and my dad. But that was really about it. Sometimes I didn't really even love my brother and sister. <laughs> but that was just growing up, I guess. I wouldn't trade anything for any of them, though. But uh, my best friend now is Jesus. And I say that proudly, man, because I don't deserve his friendship. I don't deserve any. I want to tell y'all when in the beginning of this, or when I started right, I want to just thank the Lord first, but I'm going to thank him right now because I'm going to tell you, it'll never leave you, never forsake you. No matter what time or where you're at, if you will call upon his name, he'll be right there. 
He listens to everything I got to say all day long, even when I'm jabbering. Because he knew when he made me, he was going to listen to me. He knows everything I'm going to say, everything I'm going to do, everywhere I'm going to go. That's a best friend. That's a real best friend. We got kids today who they're best friends with everybody in their mind. They don't build relationships. You build relationships with the Lord because you, he, when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. You get the same Holy Spirit that Paul got, the same Holy Spirit that Peter got, Noah, Moses, Abraham, every one of them. How much of it do you want? It's not the Holy Spirit. Give me more of the Holy Spirit. I want to give him more of me, and then he'll give you more of him in return. We get, the world's backwards. There's churches that are backwards. They, 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 they're, they're thinking God's supposed to come and do things for them. That's not how it is. He already did what he's supposed to do for us. He got on the cross and died in that blood y'all were talking about. That blood, that blood clears everything. There's no power like the power of the blood of Jesus. He'll take a drunk guy who's drunk every day, sober him up instantly, and he'll never drink again. He'll take somebody on dope, on heroin, on whatever it is, and he'll take it right away from them. When the world, when Satan does not want nothing before you, keep doing it. Keep doing it over and over. You want to overdose, and we, they bring you back to life, Satan will give it right back to you because he'll bring somebody right there next to you to give it to you again. I've seen it. I've seen it. I, I talk a lot about from experience, I guess, and, and not so much. Some of those things are not good things. You know, but you know what? God knew when I went to go take that. I'm going to tell you all something. It's completely probably off topic, but when I went to go to the police academy, I fell because I got hurt at the very at the very end of the police academy. I, I pulled my thing out and I had to go back through. Well, I struggled the whole time because I wasn't built to run. I was a tailback. I ran from here to there. So you know, a running back in football for some of you. I ran from here to there to there. I didn't run long distances. So my granny, she got up here and they had a they had a prayer cloth. And she took that prayer cloth, they anointed that prayer cloth. Come time for me to run. She always, she always kept my ways. I always had one somewhere, but she got me two of them. Put one in each shoe. <laughs> Let me tell you, you never seen a fat kid run so fast in your life. <laughs> I never, you know. And it, the whole reason that I passed that test is not because she put those prayer cloths, but she gave me something to believe in, and then. The Lord had a plan for me because he knew I was going to come into contact with people that I could love that nobody else would love. Everybody else would look at them and make fun of them or, or just treat them horrible. But God didn't raise me like that. You know, he didn't make me like that. He, gave, he taught me to love people even when I didn't want to love them. There's times that I know that I was in a bad, I was in, in a bad place that God would speak and I would turn around and undo something I just did to, you know, whether it just be a ticket or whatever. You know, just to me, it didn't make a difference. But God would be, I would hear something like, take that back. Man, when you got to take something back like that, a lot of cops are proud. <laughs> They're real proud. They're too proud, actually, a lot of times. But you have to listen to the Lord. I had a girl just break down in just tears. Like you would have thought that I just gave her a million dollars. But I went back up because when I was walking away from her car, I seen the sticker that said, Jesus is Jesus loves you. I think so. It's a little hard. And I was like, oh. I walked up there, man. I took that ticket, man. I didn't know it, but God did. She had lost everything. She was got sent home from school, from college. And they took her out her money. So not only was she embarrassed by in front of her friends, but she didn't have no way to go back. She didn't have the she barely had the money to get home. And that hair I wasn't gonna cost her another three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars would have been as good as three three hundred thousand to her, you know. But God will move if you listen to him. I'm sorry I got distracted, but good. my best friend he loves me more than anyone. He's closer than my brother. He's no, no matter how small or everything is to somebody else or important. If it's important to me, it's important to him. I know this room's full of people who are seasoned saints, but I'm going to tell you, 
every one of you need to sometimes reaffirm your friendship with that man because don't forget that he's there and don't put him in a corner and get used to him don't don't let the devil attack you with the things of this world because I'm going to tell you we're going to see some things I believe it I believe we're going to see some things that we've never seen before because we are that chosen generation there's a reason Fred that you're here there's a reason Jesse that you're here Kelsey you guys there's a reason there's a different ages because we were picked to see the end. You know, I don't know. I know it's in the Bible, and I can tell you where it was if I go and look for it. But the one thing I do know is that it's in my heart and it's in my mind. And I know that I'm going to finish. So no matter what happens to me, like we were saying, or no matter how fire, how hot that fire gets, that Satan makes that fire, if it kills me, it'll kill me. And I'll, I'll look at him and smile because I know where I'm going more than anything. I'm going to close tonight. And I just feel this, but uh, let's come and pray. If, if if somebody here doesn't know the Lord, I mean, I'd be more than happy to pray with you.